how lambda works now for understanding lambda consider that lambda has two component one component is the lambda service itself so what i'm showing here is the whole gray box which is having this aws at the top the whole gray box i am representing as a lambda service so what do you interact with when you need to process something you interact with a lambda service so lambda service who would take care of all the backend information for you so you interact to a service and in that backend service you write your code into something called a lambda function so what you see here at the top that is your lambda function so function is where you write your code it could be dotnet it could be php it could be java anything which you feel comfortable with that is what you would be writing your code in so your code is stored into a function and function get executed by the service itself so be aware service is this this is my service and here is what my function is i write my own functions right so let's see how this service actually works let's see how components would work i am trying to explain you how aws lambda works okay let's see this now let's say a person comes in or he or she is trying to do something on your front end and that front end has some lambda function integration it is integrated with lambda service so as soon as somebody is doing something on this kiosk i would call that that is basically an event happening so what they are trying to do here they are trying to do an event and that event could be simple as scanning their passport event could be clicking on a button event could be receiving a camera input or camera detecting a motion or camera detecting something it could be anything event is something which is a trigger point so trigger could be a click could be a api call maybe data fingerprint scan whatever it is that is called my trigger lambda is also called event driven architecture or event driven service event is something who trigger a lambda function so that's what happens you now i did my passport scan and that lambda service received it when the service receives it it would be getting some parameter from it it will tell which lambda function to execute because i may have lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and so on and i may want to always ensure that that only legitimate requests are doing triggering on that so this service here would send detail about which lambda function to trigger and maybe some security whether we are allowed to trigger that lambda function or not so that is the first thing happens when a lambda service is actually triggered so event is triggered from front end an api call or fingerprint scan etc whatever it is second thing AWS Lambda service receives the invocation call and trigger corresponding Lambda function. Whoever is the Lambda function, that's what we would be utilizing here. He is. This is what my Lambda service is doing. So this is Lambda function here. It is my code written. Right. What else? Now, can anyone tell me if you have any code written, what component you need to execute this code? what we need to execute this particular piece of code let's say it is java php dot net a language of your choice what are the component required to execute that particular code compilers exactly or runtime so yes we need that somebody who could understand this runtime compilers you call it interpreters so that is all we need for that exactly runtime environment yes we need runtime for that so that is always always required a runtime who would be doing the processing for me apart from that software component of runtime i also need a cpu right because actual processing will be done by my processing tier cpu i would be needing some memory associated because cpu doesn't work well with hard disk they need to access data from ram they may need to have some network connectivity what if through this function i want to talk to dynamo db and get some data from there so i would need network connectivity and maybe some temporary storage maybe we got a zip file from somewhere we uncompress it and then we deliver result back so these are the common thing we would be needing right we would need a runtime and we would need a processing tier to process our code which we are utilizing right what happens now as soon as your lambda function is triggered it would have configuration setting like it would tell about how much memory is required that is the only parameter which you configure in terms of performance to your lambda function you just say how much memory you need and your cpu 
and network is allocated based on that. So based on how much CPU you need, how much network you need, that would be added into your uh, function. You define only memory and CPU and network get allocated proportionately. So let's say my function require 256 MB of RAM. Good. This requires code written into Java. Or let's say this is a Python code which I want to execute. What Lambda service will do now, it would check what my component requires, what my function requires, and it has some pre-configured servers running. They have Java runtime, they have .NET runtime, Python runtime, whatever common languages Lambda support, those servers runtime is already running and it's not one server. There are hundreds of servers which has supported Java, .NET, Python running in that. So when your code has to be executed, what Lambda service would do at the back end, Lambda service would execute it on a suitable environment depending on the language, depending on the memory. What is actually happening at the back end here? At the back end, depending on what you requested, a small container is getting ready for you. You don't see it, but actually your code is pushed inside a container. The container would have required runtime. The container would have required memory and your code get executed inside this particular container. And once your work is done, because this container can give you CPU, memory, runtime, disk, whatever you require. That information once processed may be given back to your front end. So once your processing is done, let's say we got output, you did a seed change in your flight and that information may be sent back to the back end and said done, we have now our processing done. Right, so that's what a Lambda function is doing. So at the back end for every Lambda execution, a container gets started and that container will be executing your code. Once its work is done, we would be removing that container for, from your uh, environment. And what is the advantage here? You do not maintain anything. You just say what you need and we would be able to give you that required container and get your code executed. So that's how on a high level your Lambda function works. Now, getting result to the back end is optional, right? What do you mean by that? Sometime I may want to display to the front end, hey, your work is required, you is accepted and we are working on it, right? Or sometimes we may not acknowledge anything on front end and start just doing the work. So it depends. So we'll discuss a little bit more on that, but this is how uh, anatomy of a Lambda function is, how a Lambda function actually works. So advantage is here, no servers to manage, Another thing is I get to pay for millisecond my code is running. I do not pay to keep services running for longer periods. So I'm just paying for millisecond. Automatic scaling. Now, this is one function, right? But what if we have 100 kiosks and all of these kiosks are looking to execute the same function? No problem at all. Lambda service can do concurrently scaling. So it could scale your environment. You don't have to create thousand function, you create one function and that function can be concurrently executed for multiple requests, completely, completely independent. So that's how Lambda functions actually work. So no automatic, so no scaling required automatically scans and then it has a rich ecosystem. What I mean by that? By what I mean by this rich ecosystem is that it is not independent service. It can talk to other services also. Let's say it talks to CloudWatch for logging. It talks to X-Ray for its performance. It has integration with DynamoDB so it can get data from there. It can be triggered by your SQS service. I call Lambda as a Swiss army knife. If you see Swiss army knives, you would find that in one single knife, they would have a scissor, they may have a cutter, they may have a nail picker or maybe something else. So in one single Swiss Army knife, you can achieve multiple function. Same as with Lambda. Lambda can give you lots and lots of specific things. Can we choose a particular DB? No problem at all on that. It could be anything. See, basically you are writing a code. And if your code can talk to a specific database or it can talk to S3 or it can talk to even on-premises services, it doesn't matter because we are basically running a code execution engine for you and whatever you could achieve by writing a code, Lambda can hopefully finish that for you should not be a problem. So that should not be an issue at all, right? Okay, good. 
क्रिकेट स्कोर मैच वी वॉच ऑन हॉट स्टार सिक्स इज एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लैमडा आई एम नॉट श्योर विशाल हाउ इट वर्क इट शुड बी लिटिल डिफरेंट बिकॉज इट्स अ स्ट्रीमिंग विच इज हैपनिंग द लाइव स्ट्रीम मे बी वेन दे क्लिक समथिंग एंड से आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्प्ले द टोटल स्कोर और आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्प्ले द एवरेज स्कोर और फ्रॉम समथिंग एल्स मे बी वेन प्रोसेसिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड दैट टाइम लैमडा इज एक्ज सो फॉर प्रोसेसिंग यू वुड बी यूजिंग लैमडा वेन यू आर वॉचिंग मैच लाइव दैट टाइम probably they are using some streaming services for sending videos to you right so it depends i would say how it works okay so advantages are this but there are some more things which you have to consider so is lambda going to solve all my problem answer is no there are specific use cases where lambda is a good choice and there are some cases where it would not be a good choice let's talk about those cases there are some limitation that's what i am coming to now vk rao we are talking about limitations now first limitation is maximum 15 minute duration the container which is started for you here is given to you maximum for 15 minute we would destroy that container into 15 minutes we won't keep it running for longer than 15 minute we don't want anyone to monopolize the whole service so that's why maximum execution time is 15 minutes it's not beyond it if your code is still executing in 15 minute your container would be destroyed maximum duration of execution is 15 minutes that is one limitation second limitation we have we give you maximum 10 gb of ram so it be sufficient but if you require something very specific let's say you are doing some machine learning or you are doing some graphical analysis and you need more ram or you need specific type of cpu it may not be available so that is the maximum 10 gb ram which is given to you and then it is a stateless execution the container which is given to you it would have some local disk space on that but as soon as your function finishes once your code finishes that container get destroyed so if you stored something here then it is not maintained for the next execution and that's why we always say if you are using lambda as a service and if you have to store some data store it outside of the service the outside could be s3 could be dynamo db could be a queue could be anything which you could think of but it is not keeping your data locally stored within the service because that container would be removed within 15 minutes of execution now how to determine the code should exit within 15 minutes see vikrao when you are writing a code you would know how long it takes right so you would know let's say i am having a image processing so if i have this image processing service what i would know that if i have image size less than more than 5 mb but less than 20 mb maybe it takes 2 minute to finish if i have image size more than 20 mb but less than 40 mb maybe it takes 5 minute so you need to figure out that that how much time your code may take so you would need that information to use lambda efficiently otherwise you would be wasting money i'll talk about that example so it's stateless execution and it may have a potential cold start it can be bypassed but potential cold start is you send request lambda was triggered lambda would go and figure out hey give me a container which has this much capacity this much performance so this service would create a container for you so maybe it may have some millisecond latency for your first request because it is starting the container for you and that's what we call cold start in very first execution it may take little more time to get started because it is starting the whole container thing for you so that's how we could go ahead and utilize the service so this is what uh, anatomy of a lambda function is and the service which fires up lot of containers for you the service at the back end is called firecracker is no secret this is open source technology now so firecracker is the mechanism behind the scene who can power on thousands of containers to run this execution code and good part we give you 1 million lambda function free per month so you could use lot of lambda function and if you below 1 million then you still don't pay anything so it's a really really nice service to get started with all right hopefully everyone is clear now is lambda going to solve all my problem i would say probably not so let me give you an simple example now i have 
access this site before i'm not sure if it is still functioning or not so give me a minute and i'll i'll talk about that that how this service is and what it can do for us give me a minute i am powering on a browser and we would get started from there so the service or the website i am going to is servers.lol this is just a temporary way of checking the uh, performance and now it is invalid certificate so don't put your personal data here don't put any complicated data here i am just using it to show some information to you this basically says servers.lol they are trying to say should your ec2 be a lambda function so should you use ec2 machine or should you use a lambda function so let's see that first question it is asking me hey let's figure out whether you are a good candidate for serverless or not so let's say my code is written into node.js no problem but if my code is written into let's say cobol then it says some of the language you are using are supported in lambda via the use of lambda layers and custom runtime means these languages like cobol or if i am using let's say rust they are not by default supported can it still be run answer is yes but you would require a little more careful planning for it these are not natively supported but you can bring those through something called lambda layers right so what i say let's say my code is written into node.js okay done can your function finish within 15 minutes now this is important we are talking about one function maybe my whole application takes more time but i am focusing currently on one function only so let me see if my function can finish within 15 minutes i say yes that's fine now i am modeling application let's randomly get a name for application let's say browse drive that is my application i am expecting i would have 40 requests for this application or let's say five requests for this application per minute just give me an example my average duration to get this service sorted is let's say 400 or 40 millisecond my function requires let's say 512 mb of memory to function so i'm just giving some information to my application called browse drive and we will see what my pattern is so let's say my application is having a pattern like this i have low traffic periodic activity and currently i am running it onto m5.large and i have three servers running to handle that workload so this is one application which is having five requests per minute 40 millisecond of every duration 512 mp of ram and it has low traffic and it is currently running on m5.large with three sub services running there good that is one application let me add another application let's again generate random name for my application let's say ibu this one is busy this gets 500 requests per minute every duration it is doing a lot of processing it requires 600 millisecond and this machine requires let's say this much of ram this function requires this much of ram and this is a very active application and to maintain it i have three servers running right let's see the results now so i have put information about two application one is very busy require a lot of resources doing a lot of processing and another one which is not doing a lot of processing let's get result here see this if i start using my browse drive application if i use ec2 i would pay around 207 dollar for that workload and that cost is in lambda is just 0.22 so this is a good application to get started and use for lambda because this is how we would be saving a lot of money see where is 200 dollars per month and where is 0.22 right so that's how this one application browse drive is good candidate for lambda execution what about other application one application which is ebu this one is complicated because of its high performance and it's a lot of requirement to run again and again i may not get any saving from it if i use lambda for this function i would actually end up paying more in that case so so we need to estimate and understand that how much money may be involved to get this service running it's not like every problem lambda would be the best solution but yes not everything but some part of your application may be well suited to run as a lambda function so it will depend on how you have designed your application and how you could utilize it